Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a sheath to show you today for this Topps Operator 7. Just a quick note right now, my shop, uh, my books are closed to new custom orders. That means that I am not accepting custom orders at this point. However, if you already have a custom order going on with me, if we've already started a dialogue about a custom order, I will honor that, I will follow through with that. Uh, just be patient with me right now. I am bogged right down with emails. They've been coming in 50 to 75 every single day, and I'm still just a one-man operation. So uh, it's taken me a long time to catch up on some of these guys. I really apologize for that. I just don't have any way of actually being able to answer all of the individual emails while also taking care of building all of the orders that exist. And it's it's just kind of snowballed, and I'm way behind. So. Um, I've closed the books temporarily so that I can get caught up, give everybody the attention they deserve, and have lower wait times for you guys when I reopen. Um, so bear with me. The Operator 7, actually, sorry, back up one more second, and I apologize. I know this is all redundant if you watch all my videos, but I got to say it in every one just so everybody knows if you're only happen to be tuning in for one video here or there. Um, so during the temporary closure of my custom orders, I am producing ready to ship items that are going to be available on my website. So I take one day a week and I try to focus on items that I know are popular. Um, Leatherman OHTs have been my top seller for the last year. K-Bar TDIs, everybody always wants those. Uh, paramilitary two sheets. And I've gotten a ton of emails in the last year and a half, two years about Operator 7 sheets. So I will be, at some point here in the next few weeks, I'm going to make, I don't know how many, it'll just be a handful, but I'll make, make some uh, different setups for the Topps Operator 7. And if you guys are interested in a custom quality sheath, it's not technically custom because you wouldn't be choosing the elements or whatever to be ready to ship not production but ready to ship and you can go on there if it happens to be that you want what you see only with a slight modification please let me know we can work that out I'm just not accepting full-on custom orders right now because it's a time thing and I gotta I just gotta do right by the guys that have already paid me to make something for them so all right all that out of the way keep your eyes peeled look at my custom uh, look at my, uh, sorry, what am I saying? My store on my website, and you'll see the inventory there. You can just click ship 24 to 48 hours. It'll be in the mail for you. So, all right, guys, moving on. This is a Tops Operator 7. This is the Blackout Edition. It belongs to my client Shane out in California. Shane asked me if I could build him a chest harness setup with uh, his ferro rod, his striker, and add an SE pouch to it. He chose black basket weave for the main sheet and orange carbon fiber for the accents. For some reason, I don't know why, but in my lighting, this orange carbon fiber shows up as so much different. It's just, it looks like pale and sickly on the camera, but it's actually a really good orange color. So I apologize. The You can almost see it when it's like in the shadow, but it's still not quite right. So any event, use your imagination, picture a great vivid orange uh, against this new black basket weave from uh, Knife Kits. I love this stuff. <clears throat> so it's a pretty cool setup. I have chosen to use 0.125 inch thick black basket weave. Now this basket weave, I'm a little bit suspicious of it. I've actually had a phone call with CKK where I tried to get to the bottom of it and I don't feel like I really understand it any better. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys, the new basket weave, while it is awesome, runs a little bit thinner than a regular sheet of Kydex. Uh, my understanding based on the phone call was that the pattern at its thickest point in the texture is representative of the thickness that you choose. That means that there are going to be thinner sections. So whereas the old basket weave has seemed to be the exact opposite, um, I don't know whatever I'm not I'm not too displeased about it this stuff is awesome and um, to me the 0.125 feels just slightly thicker than a regular sheet of 093 uh, it is extremely rugged though so I'm very happy with this and uh, yeah 
anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there for you. So we have here on top, this is the striker tool. It's just a four-sided, real sharp thing with a nice big handle, very comfortable. So I bet you could throw sparks like crazy with this thing striking. On the bottom we have a ferro rod. I apologize, I don't know the brand of this ferro rod or striker, but obviously they're made by the same company. Again, really awesome, comfortable, big wooden handle and a nice fat rod. And the one thing with using gigantic ferro rods and strikers, I do think they are awesome tools. Personally, I would throw them in my pack. I wouldn't carry them on the sheath. Even though it's a very practical thing to do, I just don't like how they look as much because they are very large. Um, and you can see I've got one handle sticking up this way and the other one sticking down that way. Just with the size of them, this was the only practical way to get it to kind of fit within the footprint of the sheath with the knife in it. This one sticks up just a little bit further than the, than the sheath itself. But when the knife is in there, it doesn't really... It doesn't really look or feel too out of place there. And it is totally clear of the handle, so it's not like you have any issue with your fingers hitting it as you try to grip the knife to draw or anything like that. So everything on here is in at least a, a good location. Um, on the face of the sheath, we have an SE pouch. I don't know why it keeps crinkling up, but hold on. Let me try to get to the bottom of this real quick. just looks like it's off center. I'm not sure why. Ah, that's why. Something, something's stuck in there. Alright. Sorry for that little gap there having a senior moment at 34 years old. Uh, anyway, we've got here an SE pouch. The SE pouch comes with an SE tin on the inside, as you saw. The SE tin is awesome. When combined with the pouch, you basically have a watertight compartment. So if you need to store tinder, if you want to store a fishing kit, mylar blankets, um, you could store some food, you know, beef jerky, whatever, um, things like that. It's a really awesome thing to attach to a sheath system. I personally am a huge fan of doing a pouch on sheaths. And how I do my pouches, I actually build a mounting plate for it. I attach that plate to the sheath and the, the pouch to the plate. So the pouch on this plate is extremely... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's extremely stable. This while it's only attached two points of contact here and here at the bottom, it doesn't seem to want to flex or move at all. I'm very, very impressed with how sturdy that feels on there. So that's basically what I'm doing. In this particular case, I made the plate, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I made the plate out of two layers of Kydex. It's one layer of black, one layer of orange carbon fiber. And um, one, one thing I'll tell you right now, actually, Every component of this sheath is entirely ambidextrous. So if you ever decide that you want to mount the uh, the harness a different way, switch hands, put it on your back for a right-handed draw, like crocodile Dundee position, draw the knife out this way with your right hand, that would put this side against your body. Obviously, you'd have to flip the stuff around to the other side. You can absolutely do that. 100% ambidextrous. It's a really cool thing. Uh, as far as... Trying to think of what else to tell you guys about it. Um, all right, as far as the harness goes, this is my design in collaboration with Jacob Peterson over at Beechin Tactical. He makes the best webbing projects in the world, as far as I'm concerned. This chest harness idea that I had was something that I took to him and said, man, can you put your spin on this? I was struggling with making them. I could build them. They would be nice, but... I just don't really know that much about how to get the best material. I don't, I'm just not practiced at it. I don't have the equipment. I don't have a sewing machine that can handle webbing, etc., etc. This guy does it professionally. He is the best in the business. 
I said, you know what, my customers deserve the best, so I'd really like to just start going to him for it. He does an outstanding job, and he just he made this come out perfectly. So I buy basically the everything that's that's webbing, I buy from him, and then obviously I make the D-ring adapters, and then I just attach the webbing to a welded metal O-ring. That gives you a symmetrical three-point harness that you can wear uh, anywhere on your chest or back by simply readjusting the lengths of the straps or changing which eyelet you have your D-ring mounted to. So in this case it's set up to carry on the chest at about a 45 degree angle but you can change that very easily. Um, it just might take a little bit of time to readjust the length of the straps. It's got to be tensed just right um, for you to have it, you know. This position here that I'm about to show you is just the right length for me. Shane's probably going to have to move it because chances are we're not the exact same size. So, all right. So there you go. You've got chest carry right there. This is very comfortable. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have experimented with chest carry. Let me just tell you, I think it's probably one of the most, well, it's definitely. For me, there are, there are two options that just stand head and shoulders above the rest. There's chest carry, and then my all-time favorite carry is baldric, meaning you wear it as a two-point sling over your shoulder. So as a right-handed uh, user, I would wear the sling over my right shoulder with the sheath hanging under my left arm, and I'd draw across my body with my right hand. Um, chest carry, this is equally as awesome. I love, I love chest carry, uh, both for knives as well as for a handgun. Um, when you're out in the woods, when you're in the field, it's just a really practical option that gives you quick access to your to your knife, to your firearm, whatever you're carrying. Um, and the reason that I like these so much is, number one, if you're going to carry anything heavy or large, as far as a knife or a sheath system goes, the weight is just borne much more easily on your shoulder, uh, on your shoulders or on your chest than it is off of a single point on your belt. I really hate the feeling of a heavy sheath as a dangler. If you are going to go with that, I would add a leg strap because it helps to kind of lift a little bit of the weight off of the belt so it doesn't feel quite as cumbersome. Um, that's just me. It's just how I like it. Baldrick especially is awesome, but chest carry or Baldrick carry um, also really beneficial because you don't have to be wearing a belt to be able to affect those carries. So if you're just casually camping or you're out for a hike or whatever it is and you want to wear athletic shorts or, you know, whatever, if you maybe, uh, not that I'm advocating that you go for a jog with something like this, but maybe a smaller knife, smaller sheath you want to take with you for a trail hike or a trail run or something like that. I always want to have a knife with me when I'm outside in the woods. It's just a practical thing. It's possibly going to save your life. So something like this would be a very comfortable way to take it running with you if you wanted to. Um, those are the kinds of things I like to think about. You can also wear these with or without a backpack. You can wear it with no shirt all the way up to a parka. It doesn't really matter what you're wearing or, uh, or not wearing. You can definitely use a chest or baldric carry to facilitate keeping a knife with you in the field. So. I'm just a big fan of these two methods, and I think you should definitely explore them a little bit if you haven't already. Um, <clears throat> normally, just kind of going back to the build here, normally I don't put a thumb ramp or a little flare on my Operator 7 sheath. Normally I just kind of leave it like the factory top sheath, where because the, if you look at the shape of the knife here, you've got the guard on both sides of the handle. So obviously, behind it there has to be open space that's why you see the uh, the kydex standing up so high off of the top of the handle normally you don't see that in a taco sheath now so that's normally what I do as well I just kind of make the tunnel and then I just shave it off at an angle so it feels a little more comfortable on the thumb the problem with doing it like this is that when when the tension breaks and the knife deploys your thumb just kind of usually slams right into the back of that guard I wouldn't call it like painful or it's not going to hurt you hurt you but it's a little bit uncomfortable it can be annoying and yeah you can definitely jam your thumb on that pretty good especially the the factory sheath has a lot of spring to it this thing 
Look at that. Vertically, I can eject the sheath all the way off of the knife. So <clears throat> it has a lot of tension on it that builds up, releases, and you're just going to slam your thumb right into the back of that hunk of metal. It doesn't feel the greatest. So Shane specifically asked if I could put a little thumb flare on top of this. It does give you a better location for the thumb because the tension breaks a little earlier. Let's see if I can get this strap out of the way for you. So the tension breaks a little earlier and your thumb tends to fall down rather than go straight. So it's not going into it it's falling down onto the top of the handle. So I haven't had any issues with you know, my thumb hitting an uncomfortable position there. The other thing with it is it does provide you with just a little bit of extra leverage. So it's extremely comfortable. You do get a good ballistic one-handed draw with this sheath. And uh, yeah, long story short, I didn't think I was gonna like this, but I actually like it a lot. It doesn't necessarily look as good as I would want. Normally thumb ramps start right above the handle whereas this one obviously because of this tunnel has to start about three quarters of an inch above the handle so you know looks wise yeah it looks a little bit funky but man it is so much more practical it's so much more comfortable and uh, when I do my operator seven sheaths to put on the website most of them if not all of them are probably going to have this little feature so Shane thank you for requesting that I think that's going to change how I do operator sevens from now on um, so that's a cool little piece of uh, information there. Cool, cool that you can be part of the. I am rambling so bad. I find most of my best innova innovations, whatever, most of the best changes that come to the products that I offer are because of a specific customer's request. So Shane, this is your contribution. I hope everybody benefits from it. I think they will, and uh, I know I'm. A lot happier with that than with the tunnel style thumb ramp like before so all right guys that's pretty much all i got to show you i'm sorry for rambling for so long i appreciate you guys sticking in uh sticking around for it definitely like share comment down below let me know what you think of chest carry what's your favorite way to carry um does it change at all for you depending on the size and weight of the knife or the sheath system that you're carrying um let me know what you think of the operator seven and uh, yeah, that's about all I got for you. All right, guys, like, share, comment, subscribe. Thanks for sticking around. Tune in for the next one. And God bless.